Mr. Adam Hartman. And as you know, I'm a master's student at the School of Forest Resources at the University of Maine. And I'm studying food science and technology. I also I have a bachelor's degree in polymer engineering, which is very similar to chemical engineering, if you're familiar. Mm -hmm. So I'll start this presentation this afternoon. First, I'm going to talk about a little about uh, our School of Forest Resources and the facilities and research uh, centers that we have. And then I'm going to explain a little about plastics industry, which I think you need to know to understand about the green technology that are correlated. And then I'm going to talk about green technology and like, what is green technology and why is it important. And then a couple of slides about materials that we can get from trees and then I'm going to focus on the research that we are doing at the University of Maine and I have eight research topics to talk about. So, uh, a school of forest resources at the University of Maine, it has, it has uh, several majors from ecology to forestry to wood science. So, in our major what we do is we have two research centers, one of them Forest Bioproducts Research Institute, FBRI, in which the focus is to build a bioeconomy, like using of biomaterials instead of like non-degradable materials that we commonly use, like this plastic. Mm -hmm. But what they do is to research, do research and development on producing new materials which would replace other materials that are currently used. And uh, so they do the research and then at the composite center we try to commercialize these products and the composite center has the capacity to produce uh, 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 a very commercial industry of the scale of these materials that we do research on at the FBRI. So a little background about plastics, so uh, we see plastics every day in every part of our lives, like your shoe is made out of plastic, this table is plastic, so uh, where do plastics come from? Here is a little a small, but uh, original plastics, they have three origins, pet either petroleum, the red one, coal, and cellulose. So when you talk about products of cellulose, you can always think of plastics, because we can get plastics out of cellulose. So, uh, but usually when we, we talk about general uh, like co commodity plastics, we talk about plastic that we get out of either oil or coal. And uh, oil and coal, petroleum and coal, they are non-renewable resources. And they are, they are all natural, but for coal and petroleum, they are non-renewable. And for silver, it is renewable. Like we can plant a tree and plant it again, so it never ends. So and the pl plastics are, are everywhere, like packaging industry, automotive industry, bumpers, headliners, uh, construction, installation, and many other things. And here is a diagram I got from University of Toronto. They, uh, this is the global plastic market, which plastics are mostly used in packaging, 34% and 22% in other, other uh, usage and construction and also automotive section. So now the question is, so what is, what is wrong with plastics, with non-degradable plastics? <coughs> Here, and I have it in numbers, the plastic pollution that we have. So we have like 35 billion plastic bottles a year production, 500 billion plastic bags, and they, they make environmental hazards, environmental pollution, a lot of animals, they eat plastic and they, they die. And also a lot of money should be spent to recycle these plastics and just to not be in the environment. And also they consume 8% of our petroleum resources, which is a non-renewable resource. So in order to preserve our petroleum, our environment and everything, we need, we need something to replace plastics. And here, when it comes to green technology, so a uh, green technology is simply a technology which is uh, used to minimize effect of human activity on the environment. So it is usually uh, categorized in five things like 
green energy, which is alternative fuels. I don't know if you have heard of biofuels. Mm -hmm. And, or wind energy, solar energy, and green buildings, the material we use to produce the building, and also where the building is located far from forests and jungles. And environmentally preferred purchasing, and we try to use like products that, that has the least effect on the environment. And green chemistry, and green nanotechnology, which we work on, is just trying to invent, design, and act, act, find, find applications for chemical products that are less hazardous, uh, are uh, friendly with the environment, are biodegradable. And when it says nanotechnology, it means using this green chemistry and green engineering in nanoscale, which is a very hot topic right now, and very popular. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to stop me and ask. So, why do we make green technology? I already explained to you like, the, our problem with plastics. I have two other reasons here. First is carbon cycle. You already, I, I bet you've heard a lot about this, all these global warming issues. It all comes from carbon cycle. So when we use petroleum resources, we are producing carbon dioxide and it goes into the environment. It causes, uh, like, I don't know, the glaciers to melt down, the sea level to uh, come higher and so if I want to explain how trees can control carbon cycle it, it is when a tree starts growing it it absorbs uh, carbon dioxide and it produces oxygen so this cycle stops when the tree is already grown so a grown a mature tree doesn't do this cycle anymore so what we can do so if that tree stays in the environment it is either uh, yet uh, it, it is either it dies and it decomposes and it, it again releases that carbon dioxide or a wildfire happens, which we see every day in news. A wildfire happens and all that carbon dioxide that the tree was absorbed all during its growth, it is released back into the air. So what we do is, in, is we cut down the mature and old trees, we use them for wood products. So when we use trees for wood products, the carbon is preserved inside the wood. So we plant new wood instead of those uh, new trees uh, in the place of the trees we cut down. And this cycle continues. We plant a tree, it grows, we cut it down, we use products, and we plant new trees. So in this way, we can help control the carbon cycle. And the other reason is the depletion of fossil fuels. So here, I, uh, I have a chart, a diagram here, which shows our uh, uh, energy reserves for the next 80 years, up to 2081. So if we continue consuming uh, our natural our, uh, energy res uh, resources like this, they're going to they're not going to last long, only like 700, uh, 70 years. So what we can do is we can plan ahead so that for our future generations. So we can save petroleum resources and also we can, we can invent, we can start using new sources of energy or products or everything. So what do we get from trees? Uh, if you search that on Google, we get a lot of things from trees, like maybe up to 200, 300 different products. But I categorize them in five major products here. First is lumber, which is just a wood that we cut into beams. That's a lumber. And when we cut wood uh, into beams, uh, the sawdust and the chips are called wood chips. And Wood chips could be used to produce paper and particle board. So particle board, you can use it in furniture, in uh, building, construction, flooring, and paper also. So lignin is what keeps the tree together. It's a glue, a natural glue. And it is used as a glue. And cellulose, which is one of the most important things we get from a tree, so cellulose is used to make paper towels, to make plastic. Uh, paper itself can come from cellulose. It has many uses. 
But uh, one of the new things that we get out of cellulose is called nanocellulose. So it's just a cellulose. I don't know if you know the structure of a cellulose is a fiber. It looks like fibers. So if we cut down this fiber into nanoscale dimensions, it's called nanocellulose, which looks like this. And we have it at human. And from nanocellulose, it has like amazing properties. It's just very weird. We can get films for packaging, we can get uh, microchips for phones, for computer parts, and natural, natural rubber, NR, uh, I don't know if you have heard of it or not, but it's a latex. So we get latex from a tree and then we add sulfur and other stuff to it and what we get is like tires, like uh, plastic boots, rubber boots, everything that also comes from a tree. And lumber, which I already talked about. So uh, now we focus on the things that we do at the University of Maine. So our biggest in, uh, like industrial project right now is lumber testing. So what we are trying to do with this NERMO, which is a shortened for Northeastern Lumber Man Manufacturers Association, we have these uh, uh, lumbers of Norway spruce, and we want to test it, like bending test, tension test, to see if it, we can use it, if it has good enough properties to be used for construction. And we, wa we want to kind of uh, like, uh, include it in the spruce pine fir uh, self grouping of wood species. So this is a group that they have different kinds of woods with all their properties. So when a, when a building manufacturer wants to use like, wood for construction, they ask this SPF group and they say, okay, they have this, uh, like we have Douglas Square, we have Northern Spruce with these properties. So we want to categorize to put this Northern Spruce in that category. And to do so, this is the first time that it is happening after like 80 years in the US. And it's a very big project. Uh, project. It has a huge impact on the economy of Maine, Wisconsin, like estates who have a lot of northern spruce. So what long, the usage of lumber, lumber is uh, used for building material, cabinets, lumber yards, mill, millwork, pallets, sawmills, veneer, plywood, has several different applications. So we also we produce, so here is a picture of our plywood, uh, the composite center of human. So plywood is just uh, lumbers which are put together and compressed with a glue. So uh, it's one of the most common products that we get from a tree and it, it, it is usually used in flooring, in construction, furniture, and the rest of, uh, are here, if you want, like fencing, a sports equipment, like a ski, a sticks and musical instruments. So what I want to like, talk to you in detail about is nanocellulose. So uh, in 2014, we got funded from USDA, US Department of Agriculture, to set a pilot plant which produces nanocellulose. So we have two types of nanocellulose, which uh, I don't go into details, but one is like, totally crystalline structure, the other one is like, fibrous, it's not crystalline. So what human produces is cellulose nanofibrils. So it has a broad range of applications of medical devices, like it could be a drug carrier, it could be a food modifier, 3D printing, a structural composites. It has very high strength and stiffness values, so it could be used in composites. And packaging films and paper coatings. So at the process development center at the University of Maine, uh, we have a pilot plant which can produce up to one ton per day. But we don't right now because we don't have that application for it yet. So the preparation is very simple. As I explained to you, we have a tree and in tree, when you see the growth trees, those are made out of cellulose. So cellulose is a lot of fibers that stick together if we keep steering them or sharing them, we get to a nano scale, which is called, could be either, as I said, nanocrystals or nanofibrils. So, 
the other project we have is called Nasolo based particle group. So I talked about particle group before, but it is it is a very popular product of trees. It is used in furniture, flooring. I usually it is compressed wood chips which are stick together with the glue. So this glue is usually a urea formaldehyde, which is carcinogenic. So in industry they are looking for ways to kind of replace urea formaldehyde with, uh, with a more environmental friendly material. So nanocellulose can do that. So it, 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 it can be used as a glue, compress, like a stick, like wood chips together. And the advantages are it's non hazardous, it's very cheap, abundantly available, and can offer similar properties. Like we have mechanical properties for our particle board, which can be compared and like, even exceed the properties of formaldehyde particle boards. But the only disadvantage is that it absorbs more, uh, water, moisture, but we could also control that with adding a little bit of like, an additive just to control those properties. <laughs> She said regular part of the board absorbs the <laughs> moisture too. <laughs> yeah. So now cellulose so and paper laminate. So yesterday people were talking about how like paper is industry is not making profits anymore because of all the internet books, uh, internet resources, nobody's using paper anymore. So we are funded from like Verso Paper Company and also USDA. So this project is a big project. It is a patent pending, so human is trying to make this a patent. And it's called Celluband Cellu project. So what it is, it's a composite out of like paper layers bound together with nanocellulose. It seems very simple, but it does have very hard properties. So it is only paper and CNF. It's very cheap, commercially available, 100% renewable, environmental friendly. And our target applications are either rigid packaging or in interior of car design, like door panels, headliners. Mm -hmm. So here I put a table. Uh, I don't know if you can see it clearly or not. Uh, so it's just uh, our strength and modulus values that could be compared to other plastic made composites which are used in the industry. And I don't go into details, but just as uh, just I want to I want to let you know that all the properties we have are either higher than the properties of plastics or comparable. So. So one other thing, as a lot of plastics are used in packaging, like 14%, it is very important to try to replace those plastics with bio-based material. So there are there are already uh, many works done, and we have like plastics made out of corn. I don't know if you're familiar with, which are used like for food packaging right now, but they're expensive. So. Uh, Cellulose and also nanocellulose, they have very good barrier properties. If you make a film out of cellulose, the oxygen cannot go through that film because it has a very strong barrier properties. So what you can see here, the white thing is a film made out of nanocellulose. And also that uh, like totally clear films, they are all made out of nanocellulose by different consistencies. So that's why they are more clear. So it could be it could range from a totally blurry film to a very clear film. It has very good oxygen properties. It's not hazardous and it's 100% biodegradable. So our other project is using like uh, mixing nanocellulose with polyvinyl alcohol films. So polyvinyl alcohol is a biodegradable plastic. It is used for packaging, but the problem with PVA is it's not strong enough. It like gets torn apart very easily. So we add nanocellulose. So it gives uh, PVA more strength, and that uh, a small chart there it shows that uh, the high um, curve is for nanocellulose mixed PVA films, and the lower curve is for the PVA, 100% PVA film. And as you can see, that like, the vertical axis is a strength, and the horizontal axis is uh, a strain, so like extension. 
So we have very higher properties for the fields. Let me add a little nine cells to them. And here is I got it from uh, a paper, which you can see it, it looks like this plastic, but it's totally made of nanocellulose. And a lot of universities are currently working on this. And this is our uh, trademark project. So th this guy at the University of Maine, he, he, was, he is a PhD student from Turkey. So what he did was he made, he kind of uh, uh, had his own, like, invented it, uh, his own company. So his research was on making thermal insulation out of nanocellulose. I don't know the details about like what he put there because it's like it's confidential like, information, but uh, confidential information. But uh, what he did was he got he got a lot of funding from uh, various resources. Like he got like three hundred thousand dollars last year. So he has his own company and he's advertising for it right now. So what he does is uh, they have uh, thermal insulation pads to, to be used for buildings and uh, yeah, construction. So it's, but they are more than 90% by the grade, uh, unlike, other, like, unlike the commercial thermal installations which are currently used. So if you go to his uh, website, revolutionresearchinc.com, you can see all the details about it. And he, he's, he's again, uh, like getting funded from somewhere else recently, so it is very promising for the university and for him and for the economy of Maine if it gets big. So, and the other thing is that we can make biofuels out of agricultural waste or out of wood. So this research is from our chemical engineering department. So it was a very big research at that time. 16 undergrads, 8 graduate students, 10 professors. And they had this agricultural waste, uh, wood waste, and they tried to make like fuel for cars out of it, and they, su they succeeded. And uh, so here is a poster of them, which I got from the website myself. So I don't know the details about it, but uh, so that we have like wood, uh, there are two ways, either pyrolysis, which is burning in lack of oxygen. So the, 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 when there is no oxygen and we burn it, we can get like biofuel out of, out of agricultural waste or wood. And uh, then they did some research on the properties and like the carbon release the biofuel has, and it, it has pretty good uh, properties compared to like petroleum based fuels. So it's a very, very promising research. Uh, that's not all. <laughs> I don't know if it was clear enough for you. <laughs>